Welcome to our detailed two-year ownership review of the Toyota Corolla Quest. But before we get into the review, did you know that Namibia is home to the world's longest palm tree avenue? Well, if you didn't, now you do because it is recorded that this avenue is lined with more than 1,600 palm trees. The Toyota Corolla Quest is the budget option into Toyota's sedan offering. So what Toyota does is every time they release a new generation Corolla, the previous one or the outgoing one is rebadged as a Quest. This means that one is able to get a reliable Corolla but at less the price. The Quest comes in three trims which is the Quest Plus, the Quest Prestige which is the one in the video and the one that we actually own and then you find the top spec Quest exclusive. They are all fitted with the same engine and gearbox. The differences are mostly external and internal. For example, the Plus only comes with cloth seats, steel rims with plastic wheel covers, and the front where the Toyota badge is, is painted in black. The Prestige comes with body colored front base trim, chrome wheels, and a mixture of cloth and leather seats, while the Exclusive comes with a fully body colored front bumper, LED headlights, and full leather seats. What powers the Quest, you ask? The Quest only comes with a 1.8 naturally aspirated engine, producing 103 kilowatts of power and 173 newton meters of torque. This is the same 1.8 liter found in the Corolla Cross, and it has proven to be reliable as Toyota makes use of this engine globally as well. In terms of performance, this engine, although not supported by a turbo, performs quite well. It does not struggle to move or overtake and even when fully loaded, the car still has enough power to get moving. Listen, if you want this car to move, the engine will give you what you're asking for. Average fuel consumption is at 7.3 liters to the 100. We've managed to get it around 6.4, but 7 is the normal consumption rate and you will pay around $900 to fill up the tank. Now looking at those average fuel consumption figures, someone might say that that's quite thirsty, but you need to take into account that this is a 1.8 and it's naturally aspirated, meaning it produces all that power without the assistance of a turbo. So fuel consumption might slightly be higher, but you will offset those costs in the long run because of Toyota's reliability. The Quest is further fitted with a 55 liter fuel tank, which Toyota claims can cover a distance of 786 kilometers. However, the most we have managed is around 600 kilometers, which is about the distance between Ventuk to Oshivelo. The Quest comes with either a six speed manual gearbox or a CVT. We opted for the CVT because of driving comfort and considering the fact that Toyota isn't known for producing failing CVTs, so we actually trust Toyota CVTs. At first, the CVT drone may be slightly annoying because it keeps going ah, ah, when you're changing gears. I hope I'm imitating that sound correctly. But once you drive it and you get used to the sound, it no longer bothers you. Let's talk about the design, especially now that you know the differences between the three trim lines. I actually like the front design. It looks like a shark in my view, and I feel like Toyota did just enough to still make this look good, even though it's an outgoing model that just got rebadged. It comes standard with LED daytime running lights. However, I guess to save on costs, the Quest does not come with front fog lights. The tip of this car is quite low though, with a ground clearance of 125 millimeters. This means that it's so easy to scrape this vehicle when going over speed humps and elevated surfaces. All trim lines are fitted with 16 inch wheels, but as I said, only the Prestige and the Exclusive come with chrome wheels. Not much is happening in the rear, however I like the fact that it has been elevated to ensure that when the boot is fully loaded, the car is not overly lower in the back. Jumping into the inside of the Quest, 
which is quite simple and usable. It is made up of a mixture of soft touch material, piano black trims, and hard plastics. As standard, the Quest comes with electric windows and a multifunctional steering wheel, while the Prestige and Exclusive come with cruise control and keyless access to unlock the vehicle. A usable touchscreen is available in the Prestige and Exclusive models. However, the Quest does not come with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but at least it supports Bluetooth and contains information such as fuel consumption and vehicle safety settings. The Entry Level Plus and the Prestige get a more traditional aircon system with round knobs, while the Exclusive gets a more digital aircon. They are also all fitted with a USB and a 12 volt socket in the front. Storage space is sufficient with big door bins that can fit big water bottles, a small storage space below the aircon, two cup holders in the center, a storage bin, and a center armrest with some more storage. The space inside the Quest is sufficient, it never feels as though we are cramped even when the vehicle is fully loaded. The rear of the Quest is quite simple, but space is ample enough, although you don't get any air vents or any USB ports. What I do appreciate about the rear though, is that three adults can comfortably fit in the seats and the seats also have good enough support. The two outer seats are further fitted with isofix points for child seats and kids will be comfortable back here. It's really a pity that we are seeing the death of sedans because unlike what most people think, sedans are more spacious than most SUVs sold today. The Quest has a boot capacity of 452 liters, which is great for a family or for a trip. What also makes the Quest great is that in the exclusive, you can fold down the seats which gives you even more loading space. On the safety side of things, the Quest comes standard with three airbags and if you buy up into the Prestige or the Exclusive, you get five airbags. Standard safety features further include brake assist, stability control, electronic brake distribution and ABS. The Quest is sold with a standard plan of three years or 45,000 kilometers as the vehicle needs to be serviced every 15,000 kilometers. I have a gripe with the service plan because I just feel like it's very short because that 45,000 km service runs out quite quickly especially if you're using the vehicle to commute like we are. On the warranty side of things, you have a warranty that's valid for 3 years or 100,000 km. Even though I have an issue with the service plan, I can say that service costs are not pricey and on average we spend about 3000 per service on this vehicle and the services are done at the dealership. If you are looking into buying a new Quest today, pricing for the entry level Quest Plus manual starts at 336000 and the top of the range exclusive CVT will cost you 414800 Now say you are keen on buying the Prestige which in my opinion is the one that you should get because it contains everything that you need, you will pay above 394000 And if you finance that prestige with a 10% deposit for 72 months at the current interest rate of 11.5%, your monthly installment will be around 6840 Add insurance of 1500 per month, two full tanks to get you through the month, then your total cost of ownership on this prestige will be around 10,140. The Quest over the past two year period has proven to be reliable and cost effective because apart from the service, the only other maintenance that we had to do was to replace the brakes, which is normal wear and tear because the car runs quite a lot. Overall, my view is that I would recommend this vehicle for any person or family looking for a reliable, comfortable and cost effective sedan. Thank you for watching this video. Please do share with people that are interested in knowing about this vehicle. Do like, do subscribe. See you in the next one.